interesting. One of the questions that we get a lot from fellow uh, YouTube viewers is a question about grounding. And you've done a good job in in one of well all your books. You keep uh, hashing it out, um, the grounding chapter. Do you want to give a, a little bit of a sort of a recap of your mind of about grounds and what are the gotchas around grounds for uh, pleasure boaters related to DC systems or board boats? Sure. I mean, the first thing is um, the we've got several different grounding systems on a boat, which is why it gets confusing. We have the AC grounding system in our uh, AC systems. We, we may have DC grounding, for example, if an inverter is properly installed, it should have a case ground and also many battery chargers. And then we have bonding, which is another form of grounding for corrosion control. And we have bonding for lightning protection. So we have multiple grounding systems on the boat, uh, sometimes uh, related to the same piece of equipment. So, so that in itself is confusing. Um, uh, the, the core one that I think we should focus on first, Jeff, is the AC grounding because that's fundamental to safety. And on all of our boats, yeah. the, um, the cases of most of our AC equipment should be in some way grounded uh, so that if we get an internal fault, now fault current is carried safely back to the source. But for that to work, if the source is shore power, the AC system also has to be tied to the boat's grounding system and to the water in some way. Otherwise, there is no path to shore power. Uh, and then uh, once we do that, we create the potential for galvanic corrosion um, through the shore power connection. So then we need to have either an isolation transformer or a galvanic isolator. So so there's a, there's a lot of quite complicated technical issues related to the AC grounding system. And typically, we treat it separately from the other grounding systems. It has its own circuit and its own third wire within the AC conductors within the same common sheath. Uh, and mm -hmm. it just has that common connection point to the, to the uh, boat's grounding system. So we can, in a sense, take that out of the equation because that is a self-contained system that has that point of connection to the boat's grounding system. And then we've got the others. We've got the DC grounding, we've got the bonding, we've got the lining protection. Um, there's no reason to have three separate conductors for all of these circuits. We only need one conductor because they're all saving, serving the same purpose, which is to hold all of the bits of equipment at the same uh, potential. Um, the, the, the rule is that the conductor has to be the largest one that is required for the different grounding perspectives. So if you're grounding for uh, corrosion prevention, bonding, it's supposed to be an 8-gauge uh, copper conductor minimum. If it's lightning, it's six gauge. So if you're trying to combine those two, you'll go up to six gauge. If it's DC grounding, it's got to be uh, no smaller than one size under the DC negative to the equipment. So if we're talking an inverter with two or conductors, you know, mm -hmm. positive and negative to it, that grounding conductor has to be at least a one or conductor. Uh, and then of course you don't need additional lightning and bonding conductors. So so um, we can combine all of these conductors into a single conductor. We just have to make sure it's large enough to deal with the worst case fault condition it might have to encounter. And um, for example, I've seen um, windlasses, which have been bonded for lightning protection with a six gauge conductor, where there's been an internal fault within the windlass, a short. So all of a sudden that six gauge conductor is carrying fault current. Mm. <clears throat> which might be uh, hundreds of amps, and then the conductor melts down. It's a fuse. Uh, because it's not sized to handle the worst-case fault current. And it's generally in a bundle yeah. with other conductors. So then in melting down, it melts all the other conductors, and then you have to rewire the boat. And all of a sudden, yeah. uh, that single error in terms of sizing that one conductor has gotten you into a uh, project that's going to cost potentially thousands of dollars in sorting out the issues if it hasn't already set the boat on fire but typically it doesn't it just melts down and does a lot of damage to other conductors and then you have to do an extensive rewiring yeah so true the so now you're in I seattle that... and you have a lot of salt water uh, fresh water marinas so then we have a separate issue I and mean, i just talked earlier about the ac grounding system connected to the to the boat's grounding system which has a connection to the water if you have a fault when you're plugged into shore power, that fault current can end up in the water 
And in freshwater environment, like you've got in in uh, many of your marinas on Lake Union and so on, that can kill somebody. Uh, we call it electric shock drowning. So then oh, we yeah, need an true. additional piece of kit on those boats, which is an electric leakage circuit interrupter, which before 2013 wasn't installed on any American built boats. But for those of your listeners that are operating in that freshwater environment in the Seattle area or anywhere else with older boats, they need to retrofit the shore power circuit with one of those electric leakage circuit interrupters, which are not expensive and it's not that big a job, but it's a really critical piece of safety equipment. Yeah, good point. Um, so in the Pacific Northwest, the challenges, you're right, there's a lot of marinas that are in coves where there's freshwater inflow, even though the salt water is it's the ocean uh, there's so much fresh water coming in that the top layer is fresh fresh water as you mentioned not conductive um and so if you're swimming at the surface like a child might be or um yeah that's the that's a real real danger and uh, one why mar many marine operators uh forbid people swimming in marinas because not many of us, unfortunately, have those ELCIs. Blue Seas makes a good kit that you talk about. The big challenge installing it is finding the space uh, in between the shore power inlet and the AC panel, um, finding a place where you can mount that surface mount box, but it's doable. It's definitely doable. And it's not, it's rarely impossible. It's just, you're bringing a good point, Nigel. It's just, it's just a challenge to do it. And, um, yeah, that's that's a real threat. People do literally die from a drowning that is maybe not understood as uh, electrification. Electrocution, I think, is the word. <laughs> I'm having a hard time pronouncing it, but yeah, it's a real threat. Real, real threat in local waters. Yeah, here. Fu fundamentally, nobody should swim in uh, fresh water around any boat that's plugged into shore power. Correct. Uh, now, in salt water. You can get a belt, you know, somebody cleaning a propeller, for example, if there's a fault on the boat and uh, you might get a, a, a pretty nasty belt off the prop. But uh, in uh, fresh water, I mean, salt water, rather, you, you might get a belt off it. But in fresh water, it's potentially lethal. So nobody should ever swim around a boat uh, in fresh water that's plugged into shore power. Yeah. So if you're curious, again, go on our website and find out more answers and solutions with this sort of setup. And thanks for asking. And thanks for all of you for listening and tuning in.